there's a six month lag after a trigger hit that we implement these new fees. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, I put, we, we put this slide in here in color transparency. Um, to me, I call it um, accountability and commitment. <coughs> Some of the different comments that we've, we've received it, are that, you know, Jiro, you guys come up with this whiz bang plan, the Lingala administration, two years, you and Brennan, you're out, okay? What if the next two big bosses that roll in, they got a different idea, you know? So you're gonna jerk the people around, institute this new thing, and then the new guy's gonna try to be the nice guys and they take it away. What is the state of the highway system then? What are you guys gonna do? Are you just trying to take us for a ride? So they, that type of skepticism is valid, actually. It really is. And I think in the past, maybe change of administration, um, they've had experiences like that. Uh, I know on the county level, uh, when I was at Public Works, we went through that too. Okay? So it, 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 it's, it's a valid concern. To me, our answer to that is a couple things. The first one is it's staff driven. Um, you know, Brennan and I, you know, although Brennan's a real smart guy, you know, he's a PhD doctor, he went to Iolani, and, and all I can complain is I went to Hilo High School, but anyway, <laughs> the, the, you know, he's a smart guy, but this plan that we come up with, is, this is not our plan. Our staff came up, Ken, Ken folks, the full-time civil service folks, they came up with this. They came up with the projects. We didn't come up with the projects. Okay. We asked them, and that's why it's product rather than process driven. Um, Brennan uses this, but I use, the way I like to describe the second bullet is, um, in the past, Department of Transportation, and, and for the most part, any public works agency, we, we kind of knew how much money we could afford, how much we would get in revenues. Uh, like I said, we get about $140 million a year from the feds, uh, based on fuel tax and other revenue sources. We know how much CIP money we're gonna get, how much we can do every year, based on how much money we could get then we determine how much, pro how many projects, and where we, we would spend that money throughout the state. Okay, but because of that, and because of divvying it up so everybody got a fair share, there was never enough money to go around to make a significant difference. This, when we did this, Brennan, okay, he gave the challenge to staff. He said, "Okay, think of the customer first. Think of the motors. Think of your auntie, your mom, your family. You, what would make a difference to them?" Okay. You figure out how to make the infrastructure better to catch up with delivering what we're supposed to deliver to the community. And then we go figure out how to fund it. Okay. So it was a product driven. Our customer came first, and then we figured out how to fund it. As opposed to the old way, which was process driven with, okay, you know, we don't get 150, well, $250 million a year. How do we best divvy that up amongst all the islands, among state highway system, county and city, county uh, road systems, their share. How do we divvy it up so that everybody gets a piece, everybody feels like they're getting where they're moving forward, and in the end, nothing happens. You just make manini, manini progress steps. But what Brennan said is, Ken, you and staff, you figure out how to make a big difference. A big difference in saving lives, and a big difference in reducing congestion. Okay. That's why the Middle Street Merge project is on there. Hundred million dollars. Right? PM Contraflow, I forgot was it was well, I forgot what the price that was. That was that was a forty million dollar project, I think. Because it's both uh, fifty. It, it, it's the Wyava Interchange and also the uh, from uh, Redford Drive all the way out there. It's, the, it's two phase part. You know, these are big ticket items for Oahu. And and in the, and to tell you the truth, Oahu over the years we kinda got the short end because a lot of monies went to the Big Island, which uh, I was happy with at the time we got those projects. And then now we're focusing on Maui, and then now even Kauai is getting a big chunk. So Oahu, you know, kind of proportionately has always been kind of, you know, left out, left out. So, but with this, it was staff driven, okay? They came, the staff, our staff came up with the projects, not us, uh, Brandon and I. And it was focused on customers first, and then, um, we, we're also going to develop a website, so all our projects that you see on that handouts that we gave you, um, we're going to show you what's on there. It, eventually, it's going to get to a point we're going to have, when the projects are uh, design, finished, design and go to advertising, when they go out to bid, when they go out to construction start, 
and then you folks will <coughs> dissipate, that you folks will be holding us accountable that says, hey, how come you haven't done this one yet? It says on your website, you should look to do it. You know, how come you haven't started it yet? Um, and I'm sure with that encouragement, we will make sure that we deliver, okay? And so, and also, um, including that is this uh, protection for new revenues. Um, you know, that VMT study program and trying to find a more reliable source of revenue, that's part of it, okay? So this is our accountability. This is our, what, we, what we're saying. Our, our staff is committed to doing this initiative so that we want to do it now. And we want to get the ball rolling on it now. Because if we wait a year, and then the new administration comes on, they may say, oh, we don't like this idea, you know, go back to the way it was, and they just be a popular, make a popular uh, thing uh, so that they don't have the additional fees kick in. We want to get this thing on the books now so that the wheels start turning so that they cannot stop it. The next administration cannot stop it. Um, when you look at how this thing was put together, it was a Republican administration that started this. But we worked with the, both the House and Senate, their transportation committees. Both of those committees endorsed what we're doing. So now you got a Republican administration plan working together with a Democratic legislature to see if this is a worthwhile thing to do. Okay? So that there's no politics, it's bipartisan. Okay. If they buy into it, if the legislature buys into it this year, that means, okay, we're doing the right thing that needs to be done to deal with our infrastructure needs for the whole state. So, it's, it's, it's no politics. So what we're thinking is that next administration, all of a sudden somebody comes in, got a new idea, why would they want to change it? other than politics, right? <coughs> Before, when we got it approved, it was bipartisan, Republican, Democrat, who cares? It's just the right thing to do. If they change it now, two years later, why? Right? So if there are, hopefully, I'm sure they're gonna be a smart bunch of folks, they're gonna just keep it going, and hopefully they make it go faster on the left of Canada. Because this is a very ambitious effort. Okay, that's all I got. Thank you very much. Uh, all of these slides are going to be on his website and then the project list and all that kind of stuff. So you can go to that. And then um, if you guys want to help us give testimony for or against, however you feel, these are the bills that we're tracking. Uh, basically, oh, here we go. Okay. These are the bills that are related to modernization. Are they all the same there? Uh, essentially, yes. Essentially, yes. Basically, uh, we initially put one in and then uh, Senator English took it, kind of move oh, things around, but yeah. the guts of it are the same. Both bills are the same. All these bills are the same. Okay, we'll start with questions from the members. Tom? Uh, that's a good presentation, Gerald. I see that even though you didn't go to a church school, I should have a fighting day. You are becoming a preacher anyway. <laughs> he's, he's very good at that. He was good there today on 11th yes. He went up and gave a little speech, and it was, it was very effective. Uh, I've got another comment. The alcohol-related deaths number is not a good number okay if okay. you make that a big part of your case and here's why okay. we don't have significant numbers of weather related fatalities we don't have whiteouts we don't have snow slides we don't have rock slides we don't have earthquakes and so the things that do happen to us occur because of, of driver error primarily okay. not because of road error if i can use that term and so it's a little bit tricky, and I've talked to the mad guys about this, and I know they, they make a big issue out of this because it helps their case for other things and you know, whatever. But statistically, you don't show where we stand in weather-related accidents. I would think we're in the lower 40 somewhere, if not at 50, okay. because we don't have the weather that causes accidents. Now we have a rock site now and then. But so I would be just be careful about making too much out of that statistic because it's a one-sided statistic. I'll give you an example. At 9-11, DBET, I'm from DBET, counts visitor arrivals. No arrivals, no arrivals for five days. The airport was closed. Guess what? Nobody left either. <laughs> okay, okay. But they don't count departures. We had the same number of tourists. We actually had 1,500 extra because they came in on unexpected flights. So you have to be careful what you count, is what I'm saying. 
The other thing is, on your on your VMT, are you looking at congestion pricing at all? Because it would cost me the same to drive at 2 a.m. on Sunday as it does at, at 6.45 a.m. Um, you know, on Tuesday. I'm not motivated to not drive during the congested period. I don't, mean, that's I, don't very mean, true. I don't mean congested pricing like drawing a circle. I'm talking about GPS congestion. That can be done. Oh, okay. Well, I hadn't thought of that one, but I'm sure we can look at that. Uh, my understanding of congestion pricing, it deals with tolling. No, I understand at different that, times of day, people pay more or less. Well, they come through a, through a gate of some kind, right. usually. The London yeah. case and some others. But you might want to look, because you're doing, you're doing GPS, and, and they know the roads and the times mm -hmm. in the GPS system. It's a time-sensitive system. You might be able to say, okay, if you drive during rush hour, you're going to pay X. If you drive outside of rush hour, you're going to pay Y. Okay. And that's going to be less. No, um, you know, Mr. Mike, that's a... Uh, uh, Sound uh, practice uh, is done in the mainland extensively in all kinds of different states. Uh, we have looked at it. Uh, I don't know if the pilot study is going to look at that specifically uh, as an alternate to uh, fuel tax methodology. Right. Well, if you're using it only to raise revenues, that's a different issue. Now, Oregon, I, my friends in Oregon are telling me you know, they're looking very much at driving out of state as not being the same price as driving in state. We don't have that problem. <laughs> I mean, I may, I may start out on Oahu and end up on Maui at the Super Ferry, but I'm still in state. So, uh, but seriously, if you if part of this is to reduce peaks, level them out, then I'll I'll do my grocery time outside of rush hour. Because if every mile is the same, I live downtown, work downtown. I don't drive through the H H one uh, H two merge. Yes. So, you know, you're charging me the same as somebody who's coming through there at peak time. Well, Mr. Poirier will tell you how bad that is. That actually is very valid. That's true. Yeah. So, okay. Joe? Uh, just want to make sure I understand the, the, the presentation. You're pro proposing over six years to do $4 billion <coughs> worth of work. You're already starting doing $4 billion worth of work on $2.5 billion of known revenue. And the rest of it is... is stuff that we're, we're aiming to get from the legislature or from the federal government. <coughs> Correct. Taxes. Well, no, from the Taxes. state. The state, the fee increases. Yes. Two billion dollars. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I'm a little concerned because Hawaii is one of the most expensive visitor destinations in the United States mm -hmm. that we're going to raise the $2 per car rental daily fee. Did that pass muster with DBED and Marshall Munich? It um, seems like we're just making it a lot more expensive for our visitors. Um, uh, actually, it did pass the, the DBED review. In fact, they were uh, very active in helping us formulate this plan. Um, at the hearings for the different bills that we had, um, the rental car group spoke uh, frequently in opposition to what we're proposing. Uh, and then Mr. Smythe alluded to uh, Brennan's great speech today. Um, what, what our counter to that is that, yes, a fee increase for the rental vehicle surcharge uh, will affect uh, the amount that the tourists or visitors will pay for a rental car, but, you know, I think when you look at the total experience, if they're stuck in traffic for an extra 40, uh, 30 minutes, uh, that, that experience, uh, I think, uh, is more unpleasant than paying the extra three dollars. So um, in, in the long run, I think you got to weigh the, the wood in the bag. So and then that's what we're trying to do because it, it's not just for the local people or the commuters. It, it helps everybody. So. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. The H one is not truly a freeway, like as per LA and freeway. It's kind of like an urban road that got widened to be a freeway. And there's too many on-ramps. For example, between the University of Hawaii and Liliha, there's seven on-ramps. That's only about two and a half miles. There's seven on-ramps when you're going Eva, and there's six on-ramps when you're going Diamond Head. Have you looked into maybe uh, closing them during the peak period, only you know, maybe a couple hours to help that slow down? Oh, yeah. yes. That's an operational change, and yes, we have looked at it and. Uh, some of that work will probably be implemented as part of this modernization. Right, can you help me understand the uh, financial plan? 
Uh, let's see, it says annual impact $80, 70, 20. $170 a year is your total increase. And then this next line is total savings, $1,825 per year. Uh, how can a um, fee increase translate into a uh, savings? Okay, remember this slide? This slide was uh, based on a Texas study or a model. Um, we think one day we're going to Hawaiianize it to, to global condition, but basically it identified that for every additional minute that you are stuck in traffic, you, it costs you per year $60. So we anticipate that the six-year plan is going to save people a 30-minute commute time, both morning and afternoon combined, 15 minutes each way. They won't be stuck in traffic for 30 minutes. Because if we do nothing, if we do nothing, that remember that first slide, we'll go to the first slide, Ken. That 65 minutes, that that 65 minutes, you know, you, you add 30 minutes to that. If we do nothing, you know, that that's what, how it's going to increase. And that's what we could do. You know, we, if, if we do nothing, we just stick with six, 250 million dollars a year, and we try to tackle the state needs to improve our highway system both in safety and capacity okay so uh, I mean congestion so it's not just this 60 minute commute that we're trying to invest in we're also investing in saving lives so it's a kind of a whole program whole program but as far as saving uh, saving money that's the that's the point that it deals with the cost of being stuck in traffic thank you sir what role do you see the DOT playing to facilitate telecommuting and telemedicine? For instance, I'm making this meeting available live over the internet, so if I could have saved 10 ever residents the trip here to observe, does the DOT have an active role or do you consider there being a role to facilitate such projects? Yeah, I, we're all for that. In fact, part of the discussion, I don't know, we don't have a specific slide for that, but part of that, uh, there's a slide that talks about land use and um, other program level, uh, just to get less cars on the road. When we were talking about that, I was, I was talking about, why don't we build a building that is just for telecommuting? It just, build a building out in Eva, couple A. Or use our existing unoccupied oh, retail space, okay. thank you, yeah. And you just say, here, we make these satellite offices. Yeah, you no, I agree. A supervisor in there and put six people that would normally come into town to come in. It's kind of the nature of the office and would, the function that they serve. Would the DOT fund that? Uh, possibly, and all of that could be part of this program. Okay. So it's not just about projects. If, uh, if you look on that list, if you look on that list that we passed out, there's a statewide program and they, there's like a block on safety. That first one I think is uh, like uh, cutting uh, uh, aggressive driving. I forget what's not curbing the person. Putting the brakes. Putting the brakes on aggressive. Ten million dollars. Okay, that's not a program to build a new uh, training facility. How to do Zen meditation so that our, our motorists can you know uh, calm down. But it's putting out programs, so educational programs, or um, sending money to the police for better enforcement. You know that. Kind of, so it's not just projects. So telecom, telecommuting, we look into that too. You know, I'm not saying we're going to build a building, but mm -hmm. that, that was an idea that came out of the discussion. Yes, sir. Yeah, the financial plan, the, the trigger. Yes. What amounts me is a uh, 1% job growth. Okay. Uh, if you using the last quarter as a basis for it next year, it's going to automatically make the growth. With the, with the, you know, what, where the one was going, I think the jobs would be increased. Yeah, we hope so. It's so easy to make 1%, but is that, uh, you're going to get a basis for something, you know, 1% is too easy to make. Well, you know what, what? If, if you wanted to go the other way, just be left on the public president. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, this is from now. Well, 
You know, yeah. <laughs> maybe I need to. I, I, you know, we didn't come up with that criteria. It was the DBED folks that they told us that that two consecutive quarters, of one percent job growth, is an indicator, a strong indicator that the economy is turning. Oh, okay. Um, they see, and the, my my part is I, I didn't pay attention. Brendan probably didn't know this, but uh, we'll get we can get for it for you folks the number of jobs that one percent will represent because there is a specific number of jobs that it represents. Right. So continue probably for a while. So when you say it's easy to make the one percent growth, if you ask those job people with no job right now, I don't think they they tell you that it's easy. Well, I think next year it's going to be better. So you but we hope so. And we're part of that too. But we're hoping, well, now we hope. The economists tell us it takes about two years. Two years. So uh, not next year. I got a question about the 600 million for the Nimitz Highway Viaduct. Okay. Yeah. I know the Tinicon has real projects. I mean, I've heard that they can take up, up to 30,000 cars when it's finished. Okay. So I think some of the money maybe can be used for the mayor's plan and maybe the downtown portion or, or make it go quicker. But, you know, as I know the Vancouver SkyTrain, it cost the 2000 uh, Millennium Line cost in American dollars was about $670 million for the whole 50 points, uh, about 60 mile system, putting all the cars yeah, and all everything, everything, the whole shebang. That's a must in the past some money would yeah. But yeah. I think that money could be used. Uh, mm -hmm. by that, I don't know. Right now we got that contra flow thing working, right? So uh, I think the other projects, like the one on New Street, is a very good one. But you know, about the buy that. Okay. All right, I want to remind you now, we got a seven billion dollar backlog for our, you know, shortfall. So you know, so it's not that we're lacking of projects to do. <laughs> and, in, and actually, in our mind, we need the transit too. Okay, when that comes on, because I think it's kind of way out into the future, or when it actually comes online. So we need both. We need both. Even we're we're generating a, an additional two billion dollars worth of uh, projects. We're taking a bigger bite into the seven billion dollar backlog we have. So it's still not enough. Oh, that's one project I, I can't question. I don't see everything I can like Okay. Charles? Um, Representative Zuki uh, today uh, made some amendments to the House Bill 1167. And the two things were um, the uh, renter cars. He said it would reduce that amount. And the second thing was the triggered amount, uh, about the triggering. Uh, uh, effect. He's thinking of eliminating that. Okay. So those are two things that he, that he made a decision on. Okay. Um, you know, I, I don't want to speak out whether we're for or against. I, I, yeah. Those uh, things we got to run through the governor. I mean, it still has to go but, through. Yeah. Other, uh, we we recognize that it's going to be a lively discussion. Right. That the thing is going to evolve as it goes through the legislature. Um, we just wanted to put out. This is our initial. Uh, proposal that we wanted to put out as a joint administrative and legislature uh, kind of package. But Joe, I, I just have to tell you, when you come over here to the CAC, it's not only us asking you questions, we educate you too. We <laughs> 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 yeah, no, no, no. so some uh, education from some of the people who raise their hands. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you mentioned moving DOT out to Kabul, pardon my voice. Yes. Sir. Uh -huh. Out to Kapolei, uh, of course, the transit uh, center is going to stay at Alapai, but the building at Alapai. But have you taken streamlined counts of the westbound traffic through Pearl City? The zipper lane creates traffic jams going westbound in the morning. And some of the DOT employees might find they're not too happy when they drive that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, we anticipate some a little pushback when we implement that. But we kind of already did a survey. And then um, we found out that 60% of the DOT staff uh, live, uh, I think, west of Aloha Stadium. So they would, they would benefit from that move. 
Uh, but then, you know, there's a whole bunch of Hawaii Kai, you know, so that's kind of a long trip for them. They, they might not be too happy. How about two but, offices? <laughs> pardon me? How about two, two offices? No, the goal was to change the direction of the yeah. flow. I'm going to tell a commute from the uh, punch bowl. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Then we, we might have to look into that too. But it's all part of the whole options that we're looking at. I mean, like having two hubs. You know, that's a great idea. Actually, I thought we would be end up creating a satellite office that just keep part of punch bowl. But, but what the the idea that's been proposed is, no, Jiro, you that's move funny. the whole shebang out there because you need to draw the other uh, agencies like private consultants that do business with us, we need to draw them out there too. If we just move and we created this satellite, and all it is is, okay, you just moved 900 people out there, that's all you did. We're actually trying to create a synergy where it's not just um, DOT, but there's other state offices that will move and also the support businesses that we work with that work primarily with to make it more efficient for them, they move out there too. So it, that's what we're trying to, the, the breadth and the, what we're trying to work towards. Thanks, Dave. A uh, couple questions here. How is, let me just put a, put these couple questions together. How were the components of the highways modernization plan uh, uh, selected in this way? Um, secondly, what is the relationship, if you will, for a lot of the other things that we have heard in terms of the uh, Transportation Improvement Plan 2030, that planning? Because that's certainly a different perspective uh, at a lot of things. And then thirdly, how does this Highways Modernization Plan, uh, how is it distinguished from other, what I will just call planning components or whatever, keeping in mind, just one example, say the University Avenue interchange. That's a whole different discussion that probably has elements of modernization, certainly has elements of complete redevelopment, you know, things like that, but certainly is not a component of the highways modernization plan. But it's one of those other things we've talked about for 40 years. Okay. So uh, let me let me try first. Uh, answer a bit bits and pieces, and then no, I'm gonna turn excuse. it over to Ken because he's the brains. Okay. You, you gotta excuse uh, my friend from Iolani. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Thank, thank you, David. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, not that I went there. <laughs> one of the criteria that that we also impose when we ask our staff to look through this to identify the projects is we wanted to show progress. So, so, so we wanted to pick a mix of projects, okay? not just these big dollar ticket item things, uh, but we wanted uh, projects that could show immediate results within the six year term, okay? uh, both in capacity and also safety improvements. But then we also wanted to do other things uh, to start that bigger ball rolling, like the Nimitz flyover. Okay? Because you know, th that, that particular project is just gonna start during the six year window. So it was a combination of things. And, and the projects themselves, the staff came up with them. And uh, Ken, maybe you can answer this. How does it integrate with the 2030 thing? And, uh, okay. Um, I'll step back a little bit. Um, you know, we, we have over like, a dozen programs within our, our division. And we all got together to look at, you know, what can we do within six years? Um, I think you're, you know, when you talk about the ORTP specifically, you're looking at our congestion and capacity type of projects. Um, when we put that gang together, I mean, we did look at, you know, the corridors, you know, people and want to look at and things like that. And, and, you know, um, we understand the, the, the university, you know, situation. I mean, that place is dumb. But, um, you know, when you look at the ADT and everything, you know, we looked at H the H1, H2 merger and, and, and you know, the, the bottleneck by Middle Street. And, you know, we did, we did look at that as, you know, that's where the development is and, and everybody's coming to downtown and looking at, you know, increasing capacity and, and, and getting the best bang out of our dollar, looking at, you know, this, this $4 billion package. We looked at the capacity jobs on that side. You know, um, so so that's kind of how it relates to, to our, our congestion and, and the ORTP. Um, 
And going back to this whole, um, looking at how comprehensive this project, uh, this program is, and we, we, we talk a lot about saving lives and, and, and saving time, which everybody's, you know, safety and congestion. Um, I think a big part that we don't... Uh -oh. He kept putting down the Tell us something. I guess I guess another another area that I think that, that we we didn't really share too much with everybody is, is actually our our system preservation program. You know, we do want to keep what we got and, and that's where, you know, um, Basically, our second priority is, you know, it, it goes into our safety, um, preservation, and, and then um, congestion. Um, safety is a priority, and we do have that here, but I think one thing I do want to share is, you know, we want to keep what we got. And, and, we, and, and there, is a, there is a lot of programs involved um, in this plan to preserve what we've done, and we think that's also key in actually uh, taking care of even the congestion. Uh, if, we, if we have bumpy roads and we don't take care of our guardrails and we have to shut down a lane, you know, we're gonna we're gonna mess up the, the, the capacity in terms of you know make congestion worse on our system as it is now. So you know, I also uh, wanted to share that part. Um, I forgot your other question. I did. But no, it's okay. I think you addressed it well because these, okay. these are different perspectives of dealing with long-range uh, programs. And especially as you put it into the six-year term, you know, it's, I, I appreciate Actually, that. Actually, um, I'll just give you an idea of how this developed. I mean, airports and harbors came out with their, their plan, their, their, their modernization program. And it was all about capacity, you know, making the airports and, and the seaports better. Okay, and then that's how we, that's what we look at initially, mm -hmm. looking at how do we increase capacity, just like how they, they were doing for, their, for the airports and the harbor system. But then, um, when we all sat down at a table, you know, like over a dozen of us, and, and, and we talked about it, we said, you know, we're not about capacity. I mean, not just about capacity. We're about, you know, safety and, and, and system preservation. You know, um, we do have a lot of bridge projects in here. I mean, I don't think it's on there, but, you know, we're like ranked 40 in the nation when it comes to our bridge system. You know, we are, are and, and, and so, so that being said, you know, we, we have invested, you know, um, in the safety area of, of our great program, a lot of infrastructure fixes, you know, rehab, um, seismic retrofitting, and, and, and things like that. So, I mean, I think, you know, us all sitting around the table and looking at <coughs> what we need to do and, and what, what programs we need to address, I mean, we were, it sounds like it, it, it was smooth riding, but we were like, sitting at a table arguing because everybody wants their program done. <laughs> everybody wants the the two billion dollars for their program, but you know, we have to actually split the pot and look at that and you know administration, you know, have to be at times a judge. Um, okay, I'm <laughs> very good, very good. One last question for Zoro Go ahead. Yeah, three quick comments. One is uh, you should take Tom Smite's wisdom. Uh, congestion road pricing does work. It's just a matter of having the political will to do it and having the right kind of system. But it does work, and I, and I think you should probably spend some money on that. You should also spend some money working with the Office of Planning and people decide to be economists. Uh, because nobody's taught anything about concurrency. In other words, if you, if you really want to work with land use, you have to find out the development and what's coming on, which is a very difficult issue in this. Controversial, but that but that works also, right? And the county pays lip service to it, and the state pays, pays lip service to it. But my final point is, Frank's, Frank's point is right. If you want to put so many cars on, on the highway, the notion of moving DOT to Copperway is going to do something. It isn't going to do anything as long as you have a morning zip lane and, and a pull that to doing zip lane. <coughs> you can have good luck going both ways, right? So there, you know, there, there are some character testing issues. And I think from the planning point of view, if you can. You can try to find out where these, these thresholds are, but you can't go beyond this or else it, it doesn't solve anything, but it basically makes things worse. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with most of everything you said. Uh, and, I, and, and it also it reminds me of a point to me. There's no one silver bullet. All of these things that we're trying to do, they're like little pieces of the puzzle. But we got to put them all together, including considering condition pricing and also this because the, the, the land use stuff and the moving DOT took up, those are like long-term things, right? It's going to take decades maybe to, to fully realize the benefit. 
but it's all like little pieces. Each one, in each little project contributes a little bit too. So hopefully, we, if we can do them all together, but in a concerted effort, which is what this package is, it's a $2 billion bite out of that $7 billion mountain, we got an extra big bite, so we can make a difference. But thank you for the comments. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Let's have a hand. We've kept you over 25 minutes over, so we're going to power through. If, if you folks are with me, uh, stay with us. Um, right now we have the meeting minutes, January 21st meeting minutes. And we have one correction right now to the draft minutes. You folks all received copies of the draft minutes. Um, uh, the, the corrections are, the correction is quite a lie from the Eye of the Pacific was erroneously reported as absent. So we're going to reflect during the minutes as being present. Okay. Um, any other any other revisions? One more. Go ahead. Um, Green Kukina was listed as a member of Kukuna Viagra. She's too young. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was, she's yeah. with yes. the citizens for a fair right. yeah. And I apologize for Marion. I'm supposed to tell all the people who ask questions to state your name. And the organization. So yeah. She was probably going crazy. But, uh, you folks are at this longer than I, so you guys should have just automatically said your name and organization. You're right. Anyway, um, okay. If there are any other, if there are no other corrections, just those two. Uh, we need a motion and a vote to accept the minutes as as correctly.